Hi, we're going to be doing a, a pretest on impulse and momentum. We start off on this particular one with a question, a 0.1 kilogram, 1 kilogram a model rocket engine is designed to deliver an impulse. Now, impulse, interesting word, it, uh, we use the letter J to represent impulse. And J is defined as a net force for a period of time, and it causes a change in P, which is momentum. Momentum is mass times velocity. So an impulse is a force times time, and it causes a mass to change velocity. So the impulse is 6 newton seconds. And the rocket burns for 0.75 seconds, so the time is 0.75. They're just asking for average force. So if impulse is force times time, then impulse divided by time would give you force. And uh, that would solve that particular problem. 6 divided by 0 0.75. Yeah, so I could guess the answer. You can figure it out. On the next one, base your answers to question 2 through 4 on the information following. The diagram below shows a compressed spring between two carts initially at rest. Now these carts are classic in the physics community, so let's take a quick break and talk about dynamic carts. This is a very popular physics toy. It's called the dynamic cart. And these are made by Nakamura. And there's uh, some low friction wheels, bearings, quite a bit of mass, kilogram or so. And on one end is a little spring-loaded launcher. The idea is you take two of these, you put them together like this, and in this configuration the momentum of the system is zero. The mass times velocity of one car is equal to the mass times velocity of the other because neither one of them are moving. So the total momentum of this system is zero. Now if I were to hit this little spring, I would apply a force causing this mass to accelerate, but at the same time I have to have a conservation of momentum. So whatever mass times velocity I get going in this direction, I've got to have an equal mass times velocity going in this direction. Because they have identical masses, they will also have identical velocities. But the beauty of the dynamics card is that I can stack two of them together. So now it has twice as much mass. So if the momentum is still going to be the same, twice the mass will have to have half the velocity as this object. And not to be outdone, we add a third mass. So now it's three times the mass on this side. Therefore, when I hit the spring, it should be one-third the velocity. So those are a, a physics example used primarily in physics classrooms. One of the techniques, which is described in this particular problem, is to put a string between them. They're tied together. And then you press the plunger, and the spring is uh, pushing, but it doesn't get to uh, extend its energy. The idea being the act of pushing the plunger might add a certain amount of weight to one side, and thereby uh, interfering with your results. And so the technique was to then burn the string and then the carts would go apart and you could measure their masses, measure their velocities and you could confirm conservation of momentum which says that the momentum before must equal the momentum after any collision. So in this situation we have two dynamic carts. This one's two kilograms, this is one kilogram. String holds the cart together. But the question is, what occurs when the string is cut and the carts move apart? The magnitude of the acceleration of cart A is one half the magnitude of the acceleration of cart B. Well, that's uh, going to be true. Force on both sides is going to be the same. Mass times acceleration on both sides is going to be the same. Two times the mass, one half the acceleration. The length of time that the force acts, well, that's silly. If the spring is pushing, it's going to be pushing on both for the same amount of time. The magnitude of the force exerted is one half. Nope, the force is the same. For every force, there's an equal and opposite force. The magnitude of the impulse, force times time, applied to card A, is twice the magnitude. Nope, time's going to be the same, force is going to be the same, impulse must be the same on both of them. Different masses, different change in velocities, but the same force, the same impulse.
Question three, after the string is cut and the two cards move apart, the magnitude of which quantity is the same for both of them? Well, they won't have the same inertia. Inertia essentially means mass, and so uh, one's got twice the mass, twice the inertia. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared, different velocities, that's gonna be different. Uh, velocity, no, that's not true, but momentum will be the same. Ma big mass, small change in velocity, little mass, bigger change in velocity, but the momentum is the same before. The momentum before you cut the string was zero, the momentum afterwards is going to be zero, so that has to equal that. Obviously the vector is one goes in the opposite direction, so it's negative. If cart A, the two kilogram, travels at four meters per second, then cart B must move to the right with a velocity of, well that's got to be eight meters per second. So that two times four equals one times eight. A fireworks bomb has a mass of 0.25 kilograms. It's sitting on the ground set a mortar tube with a mass of two kilograms. When the shot, the bomb travels up with a velocity, oh, look at this, is 80 meters per second while pushing downwards um, on the tumb. Tumb? What's a tumb? Meh. Doesn't matter with a force of 200 newtons. What is the momentum of the system after the launch? Well, the fireworks sitting there in the thing, the momentum was zero. What will be the momentum of the system afterwards? Well, the momentum of the system can't change. Question six, the diagram shows a four kilogram moving to the right and a six kilogram cart moving to the left on a horizontal frictionless surface. Well, let's do something before we get started. Let's do the momentum of the system. Three times four is gonna be 12 kilogram meters per second this way. And 3 times 6 is going to be 18 kilogram meters per second that way. Call it negative. And so an overall momentum of the system will be in this direction of 6 kilogram meters per second. When the two cards collide, they lock together with a perfectly inelastic collision, which means no energy is lost in the collision. The magnitude of the total momentum of the two card system after the collision is, well, the same as it was at the beginning, before the collision. Question seven, what is the momentum of an electron traveling at the speed of light? Momentum is mass times velocity. The speed of light can be found on the reference table on the front and the mass of an electron can also be found. So now it's a matter of multiplying the two together. Take the mass of the electron, multiply it by the speed of light. Simple math. You could probably do it in your head. Question eight, which of the following is a vector? Distance is not a vector, it's just the total path length. Speed is how fast you're traveling, and it, it could be in a circle. Mass is clearly not a vector, it's an intrinsic characteristic of matter. Velocity must therefore be the vector quantity. Question nine, a bullet traveling with the velocity of 500 meters per second is brought to rest by an impulse of 50 Newton seconds. What's the mass? Well, as we already saw, impulse is force times time, and it causes a mass to change velocity. So they give us the change in velocity from 500 meters per second to rest, and we're given the impulse, and they ask for the mass. So we're going to use this variation. Impulse causes a change in momentum. And we're going to say uh, impulse divided by change in velocity is equal to the mass. So it's going to be uh, 50 newton, me newton seconds divided by 500 meters per second. And that will give you, gosh, look, at there's only one answer there that is even close. And here's question 10. We have our dynamic carts again. The diagram shows two carts that are initially at rest on a horizontal frictionless surface. So the initial momentum of the system is zero. After being pushed apart with a compressed spring attached to one of the cards is released, card A has a mass of three kilograms and card B has a mass of five kilograms. Here they'd like you to calculate it. If the speed of cart A is 0.33 meters per second, so cart A having a mass of uh, three kilograms. So here they ask if the speed of the cart A is 0.33 meters per second, what's the approximate speed of cart B? Well, let's see, A has got a mass of 3 kilograms, traveling at a velocity of 0.33. Uh, 
meters per second. So the momentum, mass times velocity, should be uh, what, about one kilogram meters per second? If cart B has got a mass of uh, five kilograms, then the momentum of cart A divided by the mass of cart B should give you the velocity of cart B.